Good day. My name is Herbert L. DuPont, MD, and I'm the director of the Center for Infectious Diseases at the University of Texas School of Public Health. I'm here to talk about a paper of ours being published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. I want to describe what the paper talks about and the significance of this report. More than 20 years ago, I began studying an antibiotic called rifaximin. Rifaximin is an orally administered, very poorly absorbed rifamycin antibiotic developed by a small pharmaceutical company in Italy. I was working with the drug uh, with the Italian company in Mexico and in Jamaica uh, demonstrating that rifaximin was highly effective in treating bacterial diarrhea and traveler's diarrhea, which is a, uh, uh, an important example of bacterial diarrhea. One of the observations that I made early on with this drug was that it treated bacterial intestinal infections, but it didn't eradicate the organism. This led me to believe it had perhaps other mechanisms of action other than just strictly anti-inhibitory effects on bacteria. One of the things we found is that the flora of the gut, the cultured flora, the coliform bacteria of the gut did not change during a course of rifaximin treatment. We couldn't again understand how an antibiotic that concentrated to incredible levels in the colon didn't exert effects on the normal flora. And what we then discovered is that rifaximin is intensely bile soluble but not soluble in water. So when you take rifaximin and it reaches the small intestine, the bile-rich small intestine, it becomes bioavailable and treats bacterial overgrowth, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, whatever may be the case. But when it gets to the, to the aqueous colon, the drug largely disappears. Now, it treats Clostridium difficile diarrhea because the minimal inhibitory concentration for C. diff strains is like 0 0.001, extremely low. But the coliform bacterial flora, the MICs will be 32 or 64 micrograms per milliliter or per gram explaining because of this drug that does not is not readily bioavailable in the aqueous colon leaves the flora alone but it treats C. diff. Now we've shown in this paper in the uh, Mayo Clinic proceedings deals with the non-antibiotic qualities of this drug. We demonstrated that it reduced the virulence of enteric pathogens. Organisms that are normally attached to the gut, the attachment organelles are inhibited by rifaximin, even in sub-therapeutic or sub-inhibitory levels of the drug. It altered not only the attachment organelles, but it prevented an inflammatory process when Shigella strains were, uh, uh, were added to epithelial cells. The, the cytotoxin production, uh, uh, excuse me, the cytokine production, chemokines were ablated from the, uh, uh, from the epithelial cells, blocking the inflammatory response of enteric pathogens. The basal inflammation, the basal inflammatory products produced by uh, epithelial cells is reduced when exposed to sub-therapeutic uh, or sub-inhibitory concentrations of rifaximin. The, the, the mucosa of the epithelial lining is stabilized, 
so that it resists infection by organisms. So it's doing something to the mucosa in terms of producing cytoprotection while it's altering virulence of microbes. Now, this is a drug which treats chronic GI diseases that are not infectious diseases. Hepatic encephalopathy is managed quite nicely with, C with rifaximin. Diarrhea predominant ir ir irritable bowel syndrome can be successfully managed by uh, short courses of rifaximin, which indicates that the drug is working against chronic gastrointestinal non-infectious diseases through some of these mechanisms, we believe, that are reported in the uh, Mayo Clinic proceedings. Rifaximin is more than an antibiotic. It's the safest, most effective drug we have to treat hepatic encephalopathy, diarrhea predominant IBS, and, uh, and it's likely that we'll demonstrate that rifaximin has value in other chronic GI diseases like inflammatory bowel disease. We think that maybe adding bile salts to rifaximin might then render it active in the colon, increasing its spectrum of activity against colonic disease. So we're saying stay tuned. We don't have the full story of this antibiotic. The review summarizes the biologic properties of rifaximin and will help clinicians understand how an antibiotic will treat chronic GI diseases, where microorganisms don't appear to be a problem. By studying the biologic effects of rifaximin, we are likely to learn about the pathophysiology of chronic GI diseases, like hepatic encephalopathy or irritable bowel syndrome. For patients, if they're planning international travel, rifaximin is an ideal drug to use to treat the diarrhea. It's the safest drug we have to uh, treat traveler's diarrhea. For people very prone to traveler's diarrhea, it can be used to prevent, uh, to prevent the illness. We need to understand the pathogenesis of chronic resp uh, rifaximin responsive disorders to understand uh, how these diseases uh, produce their, their, their symptomatology. We need to develop optimal treatment strategies for hepatic encephalopathy, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, and other chronic GI diseases to know how to give rifaximin, uh, how often, how much. We have a lot of data on this, but more could be done to figure this out. We need to explore other uses of rifaximin. Perhaps it could be used in chronic liver disease to prevent spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Perhaps it could be used in cancer patients receiving antibiotics and chemotherapy to prevent overgrowth in the small bowel of coliform organisms that lead to bacterial translocation and bacteremia in these patients. It could prevent this whole process. Rifaximin microbiome interactions need to be better studied. We really don't know the subtle effects of rifaximin on the uh, uh, microbes of the body. To understand better the antimicrobial effects, limitations, and really opportunities for uh, infections of the uh, or diseases of the intestinal tract. And finally, uh, showing that this antibiotic is successful in treating chronic non-infectious GI diseases may open up a whole new field of medicine where we can look for other drugs, maybe antibiotics, that may have novel effects in the treatment of chronic diseases. Thank you very much.
We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.